And our last paper in this segment is mobile, the good, the bad, and the ugly, with some interesting insi emerging insights on what our apps say about us. So would you please join me in welcoming Gilad Burris and Lauren Moore from Distillery. Hi, everybody. My name is Gilad Barash. I'm a data scientist at Distillery. And I'm Lauren Moores, VP of Analytics at Distillery. Distillery is a data and technology company. We create dynamic cross-channel audiences and media buy on our RTB platform for our clients. Today, we're going to talk about mobile, the good, the bad, the ugly. And specifically, mobile, we're talking about smartphone, tablet, bid requests that come through to us through the exchanges like Rubicon. So mobile, the good. Your audience is there, and it's really cool data. The bad, it's difficult to measure. The ugly, we'll get to. So some of you have already been playing with location data in mobile, so finding out where your audience is or putting location in context. I know most of you have been using desktop site behaviors to create audiences and targeting them for campaigns and understanding where, what your brand is doing. We've been combining these two data sets for a few years in a combination of ways. Desktop to mobile. Uh, finding audience on desktop and then finding the same audience on mobile. Defining a mobile audience and going back to desktop running a mobile campaign and using desktop conversion metrics, either conversions or site visits, to measure the effectiveness of that mobile campaign. Visualizations. So putting on a map the high and low propensity of brands so you can see where your users are. And context validation. So do desktop conversions correlate to physical location visits? And all these aspects, we're using mobile location data and desktop uh, site behavior. And we're avoiding CTR. So for this research, we asked ourselves, what about mobile apps? Well, Lauren, I'm glad you asked that question. We wanted to see if there was any signal in mobile application usage that we could use to drive finding new audiences uh, for our marketers. And so looking at app but, propensity. But, but first, the ugly. So this is the ugly. Yes. The ugly, though, in this case, is the issue of the CTR. If we looked at the uh, top 10 apps that people use based on CTR, we would, use, we would only be looking at games and flashlight apps, right? Because people are literally clicking in the dark. And you know, we don't want to build audiences off of that. So what can we do? How can we use app? signal in order to try to build new audiences. So one of the things that we did, we wanted to see that apps really do have signals. And so we looked at certain different types of marketers and brands. And so for example, in this case, we looked at um, apps that users of a financial services brand use. And we saw that indeed, there were certain apps that over-indexed uh, in comparison to the general population and certain apps that under-indexed compared to the general population for users of that brand. In this example, you see that the users of the financial app tended to use more of the weather and finance apps and, than uh, most people do, and under-indexed on things like uh, books and reference applications. So we saw that there is signal here for uh, certain brands. But in order to be able to use that and then try to drive also uh, or correlate that to site behavior, we had to cross between the platforms. And we did that using our innovative crosswalk of, first of all, listening to the app signal on the devices, capturing that on the device itself, on the mobile device, and matching that over to the desktop devices, and then looking at the uh, site behavior on those uh, desktop devices. By doing that matching, now we can correlate the app usage to the uh, website behavior. And we created a metric that we called the, the uh, brand app index, which actually shows the, that um, the extent to which users of a specific app also uh, uh, use a certain brand's website and have site visit activity on that site. 
And um, <clears throat> now you could say, okay, it, that could be great. You could measure that one day and see that maybe there's a certain app that over-indexed for that uh, marketer. It could be a fluke. That's why we went into this over multiple time periods to see if the, that over-indexing was consistent. So we measured two things. The first thing was consistency, whether over multiple time periods, the same apps tended to over or under index for that brand. And the second thing was the correlation or the magnitude of that over indexing and to see that over those periods of time, the apps that did over index, over indexed by the same magnitude to show that there was consistency in that behavior, which to us indicated that there is predictive power in this app signal using a one timestamps uh, app behavior could be predictive of a future timestamps app behavior as well. In this case, we're looking at um, the app behavior for a telco marketer that we looked at, and we saw that we had high consistency over time periods, as well as a high correlation um, of the same uh, over-indexing. And so what does this actually look like? What we could see is that by targeting that device, those devices that um, have the um, high activity for those apps, we can actually optimize the audience for those marketers and drive performance. We can look at those specific apps that over-indexed for the marketer. So in this case, we're looking at apps that over-indexed for the uh, financial services marketer. And you can see that on one hand, some things here look like they make sense. You know, we saw that they over-indexed on weather apps, and indeed, we see here there's an NOAA radar and uh, weather.com, and so that makes sense. We saw that, but then there are some apps here that you wouldn't intuitively think uh, would belong here, and that is the beauty of this analysis that the, the, these lists emerge from the data, and that's one thing that's very interesting here is that we don't have control over these lists. This is what the data shows us over indexes, the other thing that's interesting to mention here is that this is only one specific example for a specific marketer for a specific time period. This is all done programmatically. This automatically gets created every day for every marketer, and these lists change accordingly. So it's not something we put together manually, and so it becomes a very dynamic tool by which to create these audience segments on mobile. Yeah, to put it in context, when we did the uh, analysis, we looked at a week's worth of mobile data, which is billions and billions of impressions, uh, bid requests, and we see uh, uniquely 15,000 apps per day. So the idea is that you're using this data as signal that goes in the algorithms that are built within our bidding platform, so that we have dynamic audience built off of mobile app signal, and we're reaching audience either through mobile but also desktop, so then we can measure. And this is key for how keeping not only programmatic RTB, but making sure that we're using the best data that we can, going beyond location and using other signals. So what's next? Well, we, we just started this research, and we're, we're happy that we found some results where there is um, some signal. We do expect that there are going to be some marketing categories where this might not work. So we have more testing to do across different marketers, different marketing categories. And specifically, we'd like to do some combinations. So millennials, we do a lot of work in, in the millennial category, and we want to test an ability to create a millennial app landscape so then we can use that as an audience segmentation to reach across the channels that we have for our clients. And that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you.